everybody. Welcome to our section 2.3 lecture video on solving equations using addition. So in this section, we are switching from expressions to equations. So the first thing we should probably talk about is the difference between those things. Uh, so an equation, uh, visually, the thing that you're going to recognize is that an equation has an equal sign versus an expression does not. So expression has no equal sign. So that's the easy visual way to tell which one you have. Um, there are different things that you can do with each. So an equation is the one that you can actually solve versus an expression. You can simplify it, you can evaluate it, but you can't solve an expression. Okay, uh, because solving has a very specific meaning in math. It's where you figure out the what the variable equals that makes the equation true. Okay, so let's talk about solving an equation. So your overall goal when you're solving an equation is to figure out what the variable equals uh, to make that equation true. And so your goal is to get variable equals number. That's, that's when you know that you're done. That's what you're trying to accomplish is to get the variable by itself and have it equal to some sort of a number uh, that makes that equation true. Uh, so this number is called the solution. So the solution to an equation is that number that makes the equation true. It's the number that when you uh, substitute it back in, um, it makes that equation true. So how do you accomplish that? How do you isolate a variable? How do you get that variable by itself? In general, it's by performing opposite operations. So you're gonna see other stuff on that same side with the variable, um, and you're gonna manipulate things by doing the opposite operations. So if you see addition, you're gonna do some subtraction. If, you're, if you see some multiplication, you're gonna do division, that type of a thing. So you're gonna perform by performing opposite operations. Okay, uh, and doing this helps you to move things around and it helps you to get rid of uh, coefficients, that type of a thing. Okay, so my first tool that we're going to use in 2.3 is called the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality, if you see it in a textbook, it'll look like this. We'll say if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. So what this is, is you have a starting equation, A equals B. And then what they do to it is add a C to both sides. So it's saying that we're adding the same thing to both sides and it's still true, it's still equal. So in other words, you can add the same thing to both sides of an equation, and it's still true. Okay. And Another thing to note here is that this actually works for subtraction as well because subtraction is the same thing as adding a negative number. So you can actually add or subtract and it'll stay true. So let's try a few examples. In my first example, I have n minus 11 equals 7. So we do have an equation here. We have two sides to our equation. The left side has n minus 11. My right side has 7. So on the same side as the n, I have a minus 11 that I want to get rid of. The opposite of subtracting is adding. So to get rid of the minus 11, I'm going to add 11. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to both sides so that it stays balanced. Minus 11 and plus 11 cancel out. That would be 0. So I'm just left with an n on that side. 
on the right side, 7 plus 11 is 18. I'm done. I have variable equals a number. I know that n is equal to 18 to make that true. And I can even check my answer to, to make sure that I did it right. To check it, you substitute it back in. So I would put an 18 in for n, and I would have 18 minus 11. And I'm going to see, does that actually equal 7? Well, 18 minus 11 is 7, so that is true. And we have the right answer. If your check does not work out, that means you got the wrong answer. So you need to double check your work or work through it again. Let's do another one. In part B, I've got 23 plus x equals 10. So on the same side of my equation with the x is a plus 23. So to get rid of a plus 23, we would subtract 23 from both sides. 23 minus 23 is 0. They cancel out. We're just left with an x on that left side. On the right side, 10 minus 23 is negative 13. And if you would like to check that, we would have 23 plus negative 13. And see, does that actually equal 10? Yes, it does. 23 plus negative 13, that would be the same thing as 23 minus 13, which is 10. Okay. Our next one looks a little more interesting. We have 10 minus the absolute value of negative 8 equals k minus 3. So I can simplify this left side quite a bit. So the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So now I have 10 minus 8 on that side. 10 minus 8 is 2, so now I have 2 on that left side equals k minus 3. Uh, so you can simplify each side individually. You cannot simplify across an equal sign, though. So now I have this equation, 2 equals k minus 3. I'm trying to get k by itself. So to get rid of a minus 3, I'll do the opposite operation, which would be adding. So I'll add 3 to both sides. Minus 3 and plus 3, that would be 0. That would cancel out. On the left or, yep, on the left side, I have 2 plus 3, which would be 5. So now I have 5 equals k. If it bothers you to have it flipped around, you are welcome to uh, switch those to say that k equals 5. Um, and that is OK to switch sides of your equation, as long as you switch the whole side. In part D, we have 10z equals 9z minus 13. This one is the first one that we have variables in different spots. So the first thing I would like to do is get all my variable together. I would like to have all the z's in one place. So I have 10z's on the left and 9z's on the right. If I'd like to move those over, what I can do is actually subtract them. And I know that you're thinking, there's a subtraction there. Yeah, but it's a positive 9z. So if I uh, added 9z, I would have 18z. If I subtract 9z from both sides, then I will not have any on the right side. And 10z minus 9z, I would have 1z on the left side. So now I have z equals, and then this would be 0 minus 13, which would be negative 13 on the right side, and we're done. All right. In part E, I have all kinds of stuff going on. I have 5a plus 4a minus 3 minus 8a equals 17 minus 81. And there's a lot of simplifying I can do to start out. So on my left side, I have a lot of like terms. I have 5a plus 4a which would be 9a, minus 8a, which would be 1a. So I have 1a minus 3 on the left side. On the right side, I have a 17 minus 81. And we can go ahead and do that, simplify over there. 17 minus 81 would be negative 64. So you would do 81 minus 17, and our answer is negative, since the bigger number is negative. Then I want to solve for a. So on the same side as the a, I have a minus 3. The opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'll add 3 to both sides. 
negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Those cancel out. So now I have an A on the left side. On the right side, negative 64 plus 3 is negative 61. And we're done. All right, part F is pretty similar to E, so I'm gonna let you guys have a minute to try that one. Do some simplifying first and see if you can solve for W, okay? So go ahead and pause your video, try part F, and I will give you the answer in three, two, one. You should get W equals 94 as an answer. If it helps at all, once you simplify things, uh, you're going to get on the left side W minus 24, and on the right side you'll get 70, if that helps um, to kind of backtrack there. So you should get W equals 94 as your answer. All right, last one, part G. I'll give you one more try. So try part G. Go ahead and pause your video one more time. See if you can solve this equation, and I'll give you the answer. In three, two, one. In part G, you should get y equals zero. And I know that feels like no solution, but it's not. Zero is a number, and it's a wonderful number. Um, what you're going to get once you simplify this, um, on the left side, you'll get y minus 12. And on the right side, you'll get equals negative 12. Okay, and so then when you add 12 to both sides, you get zero, which is a number, I promise. It's an answer. Uh, so that's what these look like. So give these a good try this week. If you have questions, of course, let me know. Hope you guys have a great week.